Hello and welcome to another episode of Dub at the Cup. My name's Grace Gill, your host for today, recording on Gadigal Land, Allianz Stadium, Sydney Football Stadium, whatever you'd rather call it. And I am in the esteemed company today of three Matildas legends, Chloe Legazzo, Elise Kellen Knight, Emily Gilnick. Ladies, lovely to see you today. Chloe, I will start with you. We know in the last couple of days, the Matildas had a really difficult loss on Wednesday night. So first, a broad one. What's been your take on the Matildas campaign this World Cup? Look, for me, I think they've done incredible to be able to have such a big blow of not having Sam available for the first few games. They've been able to adapt and adjust and play incredible football. And for me, I think I'm so proud of them because they were able to get past the hurdle that we've been sh stuck at for the last two major tournaments that we've been at, the Olympics in 2016 and the World Cup in 2019 with penalties. So for me, it was amazing to see people step up and have that responsibility and be able to slot it away and us be able to get through past that little hurdle. For me, I think they've inspired a whole entire country and I'm so proud of that. And KK, to you, in terms of expectations, have the Matildas met? exceeded? Is this where we expected them to finish up in this tournament? Mind, mindful that there's still a game to be played? <laughs> Waiting for that medal, aren't we? Yeah. Um, definitely exceeded. I mean, we've, we've obviously done a, a first. We could, we've never been able to get past that quarterfinal. So getting into that semi was a massive push and now setting up a situation where we can actually win a medal um, is more than we had all anticipated. But also staying in the tournament, like as a host nation, being able to stay and go deep into the tournament is so important. You saw the support that came from all of Australia. When a host nation bombs out early, the World Cup kind of like fizzles a little bit. Um, and there's also that host nation curse that floats around. So we've obviously kicked that to the curb. And um, I think we can all be proud of the performances so far. I think what Chloe said, the, the resilience of the team, so many curveballs thrown, it, it's not abnormal that you get that, that many curveballs if you even if you look at the English team like they they had a couple of instances where like Lauren James's red card and Walsh's injury like they also had curveballs it you can't go this long into a tournament without adversity um, but the amount of resilience that the girls have shown has been really incredible. So when we look to that three four, three four place playoff on Saturday night against Sweden and Emma I'll, I'll come to you on this one how do you expect the Matildas to go? They're a team that we've played before. They're a team that we've beaten before. Um, but obviously a huge game and a medal on the line. Yeah, look, we've had far too many games against uh, the Swedish Giants. But look, the last one, we've, we've had success against them. Now, for me, Sweden are the perfect uh, tournament footballers, to be honest. But look, we've got the threats that we have. They've got the threats that we have. It's going to come down to who wants this third place finish the most. I think the advantage that we have over Sweden is Sweden have come so close yet so far every single World Cup. They're now so devastated and distraught from this defeat. I don't know if they can pick themselves up come Saturday night. So that's where the I feel the um, Matildas have the home advantage there. Um, so I'd like to see them get the win. They deserve the win. They've done so much. They've moved this They've moved this nation. They've awoken uh, Australian football. And, yeah, I just I just love what the... Off the back of what these girls are saying, I've loved what the Matildas have done this World Cup. So it would be the icing on the cake for the girls to get the win against Sweden. And I'll stay with you for this one then. Are we expecting... Would you like to see some changes to the Matildas side coming into the Sweden game? And I'll come to you both on this as well. But, Em, to you first. Yeah, look, there'll be some strong opinions from these two. Um, you know, I think, I think the whole nation would like to see some of the girls get their debuts. Um, if, we, if we've seen anything from this last game against England, there were some tired legs out there. And, and rightfully so, like the, a lot of these you know, this starting 11 girls have been running off their feet. I think Matilda, uh, sorry, Katrina Gori's stats have been you know, astronomical in terms of the ground that she's been covering. So as the further and further you get in, in tournament football, um, you know, the harder and harder it gets in terms of... Uh, uh, turning over the legs. So, you know, they've hit a point now where they're tired. So we'd love to see some changes, some debuts, some impact of energy and, you know, some fresh faces in the Matildas jersey for some uh, some more supporters to get behind some of these other girls that maybe aren't the, the forefront names of the Matildas um, because we're a collective. Everyone deserves um, equal support. So I'd love to see some of the girls get a run and I'd love to see Tony make some, I mean, I'm just a striker that, you know, I'm, I'm a big advocate for, you know, a lot of game changes. Um, striker myself coming off the bench. You want more game time. Everyone wants game time. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing to see some changes for the last game. And, Chloe, I'll jump to you because you had quite a reaction when I asked that question of Emily. So tell us about that. You want to see some changes to the Matildas oh, yeah. <laughs> starting yeah. lineup? I definitely did. No, yeah. I would definitely love to see some injection into this team. You know, Em touched on it about seeing some tired legs out there. And the, the Matildas have done an incredible job to be able to cover as much ground as they have. But I think we have some young people on the bench who are just chomping at the bits to be able to get onto the field, uh, like Charlie Grant being able to come in and take the role of Ellie. And, you know, we've got Alex Chidiak on the bench who's going to be able to do amazing things on the wing. 
wing or whether she plays in the midfield and um, Claire Wheeler, I would love to see be able to get onto the field. I think she is a, an absolute technician in the midfield and maybe relieve Katrina Gorey of her position and maybe if we need to have her come back on. But for me, I think it's we're in this position where we still need to win. So I understand what Tony is going to be doing and where, wherever he's going to put those players. But for me, it's all about this experience. We talk about this once in a lifetime opportunity. We want to be able to give all of the girls who have been a part of this their foot onto the field to be able to have their moment in such a historic uh, tournament, once in a lifetime tournament. So I would love to see it, whether it's going to happen or not, I'm unsure. Um, but I think we need that energy that uh, they will be able to bring because they've been waiting on the bench for, for this moment. And KK, Chloe mentioned it there. Obviously, it's a game, of course, and the Matildas still want to win. How do they beat Sweden? That's a great question. Uh, I wish I had the winning formula for you. <laughs> <laughs> we have played them many times, so we, we understand. I don't want to give away our tactics also. like <laughs> Without we, giving anything away, we, we know we the kind of football they play. Yeah, they, they do a pocket press, so they like to show us into one side of the field, and then it's really important that we get out of that press or don't play into their press. Um, to then get out onto the other side. But there'll be ways that Tony works tactically because he knows how Sweden play inside out, being Swedish himself. Um, so it, it'll end up being quite a tactical game. And um, I don't really anticipate anything being different to previous times that we've played them. But, you know, who knows? Tournament of curveballs, so let's mm. see. <laughs> it has been indeed. Um, and I want to touch on the role that each of you have played in this World Cup because... Personally, and from a personal note of me, you've been such great advocates for the game, such great spokespeople, and in a position that I know you all would have rather not been in. And I admire you all greatly for that. So I think you've held yourself with great poise, great dignity, and there's a lot of pride. I think the whole Australian public has about how the three of you have performed. So congratulations for that. But Em, I'll come back to you. How have you found the experience, which understandably so, has been emotionally challenging? Yeah, look, I think I'd probably speak on all, on behalf of all of us. You know, we, we'd give up anything to, to hand this mic back and, and, and lace up and, and be on the pitch with the girls. Absolutely anything. Um, you know, but when an opportunity arises, you know, we, we've taken it. You know, the, um, this media opportunity has come up for us to be able to support the girls from a totally different angle. Obviously, we know the Matildas inside and out. They're some of our closest friends, you know, they're family to us. So we've been, I guess, provided this opportunity to speak on their behalf, to give player insight, um, as well as, you know, finding the balance of actually keeping their trust. Um, but, you know, um, for me, it's 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 been a one of mixed emotions. I never really thought I'd be uh, with a microphone here in media pitch side um, while, while the girls are warming up. So it's been uh, I'm, I'm definitely a mix of emotions here. But like I've said, um, I wouldn't choose it any other way unless I could be out there. And, you know, I've been able to support the girls from, from this side of things. And, and that's all we can do, really. So, yeah, it's actually a hard one to speak. It's actually a hard one to speak on because I can't quite get the words out on how difficult it's been. However, it's, it's, it's not about us. It's about the Matildas. This is the cards that we've been dealt and we'll help in any way that we can. And, and right now it's from a media perspective and, and that's what it is. KK, same question to you. It's been fun being on your team, Grace, at yeah, Channel 7. Uh, I've really enjoyed the journey. So when I had my injury in March, I didn't even think twice about it. Um, I just wanted to be as close as I could to the team and to the World Cup to, to experience it. I didn't want to sit as a fan. Um, I wasn't ready for that, so I wanted to really be on the journey with them. And then the idea to actually take Australia on the journey, I was kind of intrigued about. I was like, oh, I don't really think of myself as a pundit, but I was like, I'll give that a crack. And I've actually really enjoyed it. And I think it's really valuable to give accurate, relevant info because the amount of people that tuned into this World Cup is absurd. Like, I'm glad I didn't know 11 plus million were watching that game on Wednesday night. Um, but I just think doing a good job and, and showing what this team is about was the main thing. And done very well as well. Chloe, same question. Look, I think for me, um, my journey into potentially getting into the Matildas for this World Cup was quite extensive and long. It was a two-year battle of coming back from my ACL and, and picking up a little foot injury. For me, it was devastating. But in taking the role on of thinking that this tournament is just way bigger than myself and wanting to appreciate what this is going to do within sport in Australia and just how we can capitalise on this. I wanted to be the person who would draw the people at home to the Matildas and have that authentic self um, for me, I think is important because I feel like that's something I do in the Matildas. Um, 
I'm the glue sometimes. Most of the time I'm out there running as much as I can, but I'm, I'm, I'm joking about running my mouth on TV now. So <laughs> for me, uh, I think I've just embraced this in the regards that it's been an incredible journey and that we have all wanted to be a part of this and whatever role that is, we wanted to be able to take it with both hands and who knows what opportunities will be able to come from this as well. And this isn't the end of all of our journeys. This is just a part in what happens as professional athletes. Um, it's one that's hard to swallow and one that we will probably uh, never really get over in a personal aspect. But I think in that regards, we've been able to be a part of something so monumental. And for that, we've had the experience of being in the grandstands, something that the players don't really get to appreciate. We've seen fans, we've seen the love, we've seen the passion from off of the field. And that gives us something else that we can take back onto the field and take back to the girls. Um, and I think that just gives us something more of an edge to you know f have this little fire in our belly for you know the, all the other tournaments that are coming up and i'm really grateful for the opportunity to have been able to do this it's helped me immensely in my own personal life um it's kept my head cool calm and collected and i've just been so grateful to be a part of all of this process well again i would reiterate that you've all done a really spectacular job so congratulations and today we're talking about the a-league because we've had the announcement that there's going to be a standalone round for the a-league women's opening round first ever time that's happened in its 16 years history which is huge um, we know that the competition is starting on the 14th and the 15th of october and you've all played in the a-league before in some capacity uh, chloe again i'll stick with you how excited are you to see the a-league kick off again and especially off the back of such a monumental world cup campaign look with everything that you just said i think it's just a nod in the direction that you know we're appreciating women's football um, and for us, we want to be able to capitalise off of this FIFA Women's World Cup. We didn't just have this here because uh, this was going to be the, the standalone tournament. We wanted this to be able to ignite something that's going to spark sport in Australia. And I think that's exactly what we've done. Um, and that coming off of that, we need to be able to get people still coming to the games. You've just seen the incredible support. 11 million people was just the Channel 7 viewage. That wasn't live sites. That wasn't people going to stadiums to watch it on a big screen. I think it's over 60% of Australia that watched for, for that one game. So if we could just get a small percentage of that or even you know 60 percent you know to be able to come on board for the a-league uh, would be incredible and i think this is the time if we're going to i've talked at a, i've talked about the connection that the matildas have brought people and the love and the passion that you could see in the grandstand and that's the same for here in the a-league you know all of the players that are in the matildas now that they've all had a part in this league and i think it's a testament to see where it was in the last 16 years it hasn't been amazing for the a-league and we're trying to get in the direction that we can be so what is the possibility if we do have the right investment, if we do have the support, where could the Matildas be in the years to come? And I think that is the one thing. There's no ceiling. And I'm really excited to, to know that we're now here and we've got so much more to go. Well, one thing we're going to see in this A-League season is the re-entry into the competition of the Central Coast Mariners. And just swanning in today, Taryn King, the most recent signing for the Central Coast Mariners. Taryn, how important is the Central Coast being back in the competition for you and how does it feel to be a Mariner? Yeah, obviously really exciting to um, have the Mariners re-enter the competition. Um, yeah, it's awesome. It's obviously created the full home and away season finally that we've all kind of been waiting for in terms of professionalism and the authenticity of the league. Um, so yeah, really exciting. Um, I think the buzz around the Central Coast about the women's team is um, building and especially off the back of the Matildas and all the work they've done, it's, it's um, incredible to see and be a part of. And you've had a season at both Canberra United and Newcastle Jets. What's drawn you over to the coast? What's drawn you to the Central Coast Mariners to move teams? Yeah, I think um, obviously Canberra have, being a club that's only got a women's team currently, um, it was awesome to be down there and really see how a camera supports the women yeah, down saying there. Saying all the right things, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's a massive, massive thing about camera is they're so supportive of um, the women's game and football in general, but that's all they've got down there at the moment to support, so they get right around it. Um, obviously, um, just leaving the Jets now and um, obviously had such um, a great time there, didn't get uh, many great results there, uh, but... I still enjoyed my experience there, but um, yes, yeah, stoked to be um, headed towards Central Coast. Um, they're, they're really keen to have the women's team and um, really getting behind us. So, And you've excited. got all home games at Gosford Stadium, correct? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Spectacular. It's massive. Um, yeah. The CEO, Sean, he was saying we're the only club so far to commit um, totally to have the women's there, even when the men aren't there. So it's awesome to, to not rely on having the 
the double headers with the men and really have just our standalone games at the stadium and get all the fans there to just support the women. Yeah, incredible commitment, that one. Um, yeah. And I'll throw this one to, to you three. Do you have any memories of Central Coast when they were in early in what was then the W League? I'm seeing vacant faces. Yeah. Pass it to KK? Her. Oh, <laughs> nothing like... Sorry, <laughs> 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 nothing stuck. I think it... Oh, God. I think we were wearing Hummel at the time. God help me. <laughs> yes, all the zippers were falling <laughs> yeah. off. <laughs> Back in those days, we had yeah. rugby cut shorts from yeah. Hummel, and yeah. um, that was a long time ago. But it's great to have you guys back and setting the way, having all of your home games in the big stadium. I think mm. we're all very jealous. Yeah. Yeah. And but setting the standard, yeah. setting the standard for yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're not reporting. Yeah, I just think you know, with with Central Coast Mariners coming into the league, they've they've come in with this with this bar now. They've raised the bar. They're in the under the umbrella with the men's team. They're providing the women the facilities, and you know they're they're, they're setting the standard for all the other A League clubs uh, around Australia that they're going to be ba uh, their home games going to be based at the Central Coast Stadium, no matter what. So you know, through all the other A League clubs out there, I guess I'm saying you know let's let's all raise the bar because the league needs to reach new heights. It needs to be professional and it needs to be at a certain standard. So. Um, it's good to see what addition that's done and uh, hopefully that has a positive uh, impact on the league. And a full home and away season now, which is something that we've been mm -hmm. pushing for since day dot, 22 pushing. games. Yeah, yep. so how good is that to have a full home and away season? Oh, I mean, it's, you know, we, we still want a full-time professional season, but if we think about attracting players, that's the one thing that will attract a world-class player from overseas is, is knowing that you've got a full-time professional league. I mean, for us, I remember we had we had like a couple of weeks in pre-season and then we'd just play for three months and then and then what? So um, to have a, a, a 22 full-game season, I mean, it, it's been a long time coming and, and this is where it starts. So um, I'm excited to see where this season is going to take, you know, the future of women's football. Yeah, I've been dreaming of this moment since 2008. I was like, when are we going to get there? So it's amazing that it's finally happened. And I just had to check myself and remember, wow, what was it like back in the day? And then you've just reminded me 12, in 12, 12 games. games. <laughs> 12 games. 12 games was, at, was where it was at. And we've been hoping, waiting, wishing, and it's finally here. But it's certainly not the end point. We still need to keep growing from here. Well, that's a, a really positive note to finish on. So thank you all for being here today, for having a chat, and for our under-16 attendees at our Liberty A-League games. With a Liberty A-League pass, you can attend these games for free. Make sure you join and follow all our Keep Up coverage on keepup.com.au and always enjoy the football.